constant replay of the run. They gather in bars, in the Plaza Castillo, in internet cafes. They scan the images for familiar faces, but the images pass too quickly to identify anyone in particular. The run is over a half mile, and the video cameras along the route cannot possibly capture it all. After the run, it's a tradition for members of the foreigner group to meet up at Bar Taco in the Plaza Castillo. There is a surreptitious headcount of who is there and who is not. That looks ugly. Without the cut. The whole thing is somewhat macabre, going over the photos of yesterday's crop of the gourd and maimed. It was a miracle he only got scratched. Yeah, that's, that's probably what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did they know that? <laughs> Why, because you kept on running. In hushed voices, some of the runners think they may have seen one of their own being carried off in a stretcher. The two Americans, yeah. Someone in the group mutters two Americans and the man with the mutton chops hasn't shown up yet. You couldn't believe so many people were going this way and that way and you're walking up and there's puddles of blood on the street as you're going and just and then the shops are opening like all right let's go for business again. This is really a unique <laughs> this is a different time. Yeah the guy that got jammed right in his, in his stomach it went in here and went out there. And the thing is, I'm sitting there, I'm watching, I'm kind of hanging on the wall because a bull came after me. I jumped up on the wall, I holding on to a door, went after him, and I'm watching it like this. I'm leaning down here like this. He gets thrown up, gets gored again, and he's kind of going like this to somebody, like he's all right. Somebody walks up, pulls his arm away, and it's all covered in blood. And it's just, everything's going, you know? And they go to grab him, the bull turns around, and then finally they were able to get him out. They were just pulling people off on stretchers, ambulances, like it was, it was nuts. It was a rough run apparently. Uh, where we stopped apparently right afterwards, some guy got hit. And um, no, maybe it was a good place to stop where we did. It was, like John said, it was a rough run. So, you know, maybe if we had seen that, you know, we're not thinking about running again. Or maybe we're like, you know, our heart's beating a lot faster right now. Either way, after running that, I mean, my heart was beating well you know after like minutes afterwards and stuff like that it was it was intense you start running you see the bulls go by and you're not sure because there's normally six bulls sometimes I think they add more every day but about six and you see a group run by and you're not sure how many there are so you start running as soon as you see that and you're not sure if there's like a couple more behind you so you're still looking back you're still looking over your shoulder for that stray bull that's just gonna come and pierce you in your kidneys or something. It really give you a mark to, to last the rest of your life, you know, something to tell your children about. So Joe, would you, would you do the run again? You know what, I'm, it's crossed my mind right after I did it, I was thinking about it. And I was like, you know, maybe tomorrow we run again. Because, I mean, we, we kind of, <laughs> they, they ran by, we kind of watched them run by, then we kind of followed them a little bit, but I mean, what would it be like to like run right beside him? To get that like newspaper and like hit him on the head or something like that, you know? It's... In an hour, the photos of the run are put up outside a nearby photo shop. People wander over to see if they recognize any of their friends. The man with the mutton chops appears pinned against a doorway, inches from the bull's horns. With the bulls, it was a beautiful run. We made it to the garage door, we stopped. We thought all the bulls went fast. Jimmy and I are clapping each other on the back. Come on, let's go count noses. We turned around and the bull was on us. He'd been behind. We didn't know it. All I said was, oh shit. Jimmy says, I ain't got time. And down we went. The bull, we were very, very fortunate. Extremely fortunate. But that bull slipped and fell. And when he came up, he was looking the other way. Senor Callejo is giving a blessing that I got away with what I did. That was quite a morning. I'll be here next year. Okay. You leaving? I'm leaving. Heading for Madrid. The party's over. The festival ends on July 14th at midnight, where it started, in front of City Hall, with the singing of the Pobre Mi, or Poor Me. Poor Me, the party has come to an end. The revelers remove their festival scarves. They will not put them on again until next year's San Fermin Festival.
When the sun rises, the bars close for the first time in the nine days of the festival. The streets are cleared of trash. Almost all the foreigners have left town. Only the Spanish and Basque remain, are thoroughly exhausted from days and nights of constant fiesta, but many still don't want the fiesta to end. The festival is officially over, but there are indications that something unofficial is in the works. Hundreds of diehards drift down the sloping street of Santo Domingo where the bull run starts and chant the traditional prayer to San Fermín before the running of the bulls. A youth in saintly garb climbs up the wall, crawls into the space reserved for the saint and blesses the crowd. get gored yeah I've done Mardi Gras nine spring breaks fantasy fest in Key West Times Square in 94 95 Chicago the millennia nothing nothing compares to this town you could combine them all together and nothing does compares to this town that's a fact but the adrenaline rush and the history behind it is just so phenomenal I mean everyone should at least experience it once